as what's the crack and welcome back to another new video on ktfg and this is your premier league predictions for match week 33 and along with that we are also predicting a semi-finals of the fa cup yes ladies and gentlemen it's a pretty massive um weekend coming up here for uh english football we're going to find out the fa cup finalists and we're also going to find out if teams have a better chance of the Champions League, Europa League, getting relegated or not. So yeah, it's a pretty big weekend. So we're going to start off in the Premier League. We're starting off now with Tottenham Hotspurs versus Brighton. Now, this is a pretty big game here. Uh, Tottenham Hotspurs, of course, are in amazing form. I mean, they're coming off that 5-1 win against Newcastle. They got a 4-0 win away against Aston Villa. And Aston Villa team, who played very good in that game as well. So yeah, they're really doing very good in their Antonio Conte. Things are starting to click finally. And they do have a good record against Brighton. And Brighton at the moment, although they're in bad form though, they did come off a 2-1 win away at the Amherst against Arsenal. Now they're travelling back to North London. Will it be the same sort of story here? I'm not too sure. I'm going to say though Tottenham will come out in this game victorious with a 2-0 victory. Um, I'm going to say Jay Jan Kulisewski will get the only goal in the first half. Make it 1-0 at half time. Then the second half, I'm going to say Matt Doherty, a player in form. The Irishman is going to double that lead. 2-0 uh, win for Tottenham Hotspurs here. Kulisewski and Doherty, both the players down the right wing, are going to get the goals. And yeah, it's going to be a pretty easy 2-0 win for Conte's men as they edge ever so closer to the top four uh, position on Champions League football for next season. Our next game is Manchester United versus Norwich City. And well, to, I tell you about though, Manchester United are an utter mess right now. 1-0 defeat to Everton. Absolutely embarrassing. I mean, th them players sh should be ashamed of themselves. To be honest, I don't really care anymore. Play the kids in this game. I do not care. Play Hannibal Mabry. Play Alejandro Garnacho. Play Charlie McNeil. Play these kids who will give more for the badge than these overpaid uh, uh, professional footballers or so-called professional footballers. They're overpaid, like, and I tell you what, even though we should really be absolutely thumping Norwich at home, it's really, it's, I mean, I'll tell you this, I'm really not confident about this game. I'm not confident about facing anyone. I mean, said this weekend we were up against Scunthorpe United at home, I still wouldn't be confident because I know we're an utter mess right now. You know what, yeah, this is what I've said for my prediction. I'm going to go for a goalless nil-nil draw here. A boring nil-nil draw at Old Trafford as North City, the Canaries, scrape a point away at Old Trafford. It's going to be a really boring match, this one. I'm going to have to watch it still, but it's going to be very boring, I think. I just cannot see Manchester United getting the win this one. Even if we do score in this game, I can't see the Canaries also scoring too. I just cannot see us winning. Even if we do win, I don't think it'll be comfortable enough. So yeah, I'm going to say nil-nil draw. Boring nil-nil draw. I mean, we drew nil-nil earlier on, the, on in the season at home to Watford. I mean, I can definitely see this happening against Norwich too. So yeah, nil-nil draw, I'm going to say, as Manchester United, well... That maybe even Europa Conference League could be um a doubt for next season. They really do need to fix it up their um mentality and they need to dig in and get a win. However, I'm gonna say a goalless draw at Old Trafford. Next game now, it's Southampton versus Arsenal. Now Southampton are currently in awful form at the moment, despite having a an amazing renaissance halfway through the season. They are doing awfully right now. I mean, their last game is six nil thumping at home to Chelsea. Absolutely embarrassing, honestly. Whereas Arsenal, though, they're starting to show their true colours in their past few games. They've lost to Crystal Palace. They've lost to Brighton. So they're just not doing good anymore, though, either. So it's going to be a pretty tight game. I'm going to say something looks a wee bit better in this game. It's going to be very tight, though. I still do think Arsenal will be the better side. And while I'm going to say that the Gunners will scrape through with a 1-0 victory on the South Coast, it's going to be a pretty tight game. And the goal came in, like, the 70th minute or something like that. I'm going to say Emile smith Row this time is going to get the goal. Not Bukayo Saka. Who I still think we'll have a good game in this one. I'm going to say Smith Rowe will score the only goal of the game down in St Mary's. And a pretty crucial 1-0 win for the Gunners. I just cannot see Southampton winning this game again. We're going to play a wee bit better. Arsenal won't be looking too good again. But well, they'll definitely take the three points. As they really want to get back in the Champions League for next season. And the next game now is Watford versus Brentford. This is a massive uh, must-win game for the for the Hornets because I mean if they didn't win this game then I'll tell you what they may as well be down they may as well be gone down to the championship again because it's not looking good for them at the moment I mean I, be I believe um, last time these two sides met it was a 2-1 win for Brentford a 95th minute penalty I think it might have been at, at Brentford so yeah now we're going to Vicarage Road here it's going to be another pretty tight game in my opinion both sides will definitely have loads of chances in this one but I'm going to say that the Bays will once again get another win in the Premier League I'm going to say this time they'll scrape a 1-0 victory away at Vicarage Road. It's going to come in the armour. Christian Eriksen plays a lovely ball and Johan Visse will finish it. He'll finish off his dinner and that'll be the only goal of the game. 
a Watford will be okay in this game, I do feel, but I just do feel that Brentford will just have a wee bit more quality that will get them the win in the end. So yeah, here I'm going to say Vickers Road, Watford nil, Brentford won. That is my prediction. Now we're going on to the two Premier League games on Sunday. Starting off then at St. James's Park with Newcastle United versus Leicester City. Massive game here. Leicester City will be playing against PSV Eindhoven in the Conference League tonight away in the Netherlands. So they could be a wee bit fatigued in this one. Remember last time I said last week I said they'd be fatigued and lose three 0 the Palace. Well, they won that game two one. But I tell you what, here's going to be a very tight game. I do think Newcastle will be the better side by far in this one. But I'm going to say that Leicester will defend like a unit for something they haven't really done this season. Really, I'm going to say they'll defend. They'll defend very well in this one. But I'm going to say though that Newcastle will get a smash and grab one nil win up in St James's Park. And I'm going to say Joel Linton will score the goal after about fifty or oh, fifty odd minutes. I'm going to say Joel Linton will be the man of the match in this game. I think he'll be a very good midfielder in this one, as he has been for half the season. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to say he'll score an absolute belter, being twenty five yards. I'm going to say the goal will come from. That'll be the only goal of the game at St James's Park. One nil win, new big three points for Newcastle United, and well, it's a massive blow for Leicester City as Newcastle United get a well deserved one nil win. And finally, now the final uh, Premier League game, it's West Ham United versus Burnley. Now, this is a massive game for Burnley, a must-win game, because last week, a 1-0 a one nil defeat away at um, North City. That is not what you want if you're fighting for your lives in the Premier League. But, though, although West Ham are a good side, I mean, they're currently not doing too good in the Premier League. And we'll look at a Thursday night game away at Lyon in France. So they could be a wee bit fatigued in this one too. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to say that Burnley will come to the London Stadium and they'll get a point from it. I'm going to say it'll finish 1-1 between the Hammers and the Clarets and the Claret and Blue Derby. I'm going to say though that um, the Hammers will have a lead at half time. Jared Bowen once again scoring another goal for West Ham. But I'm going to say they'll sacrifice that about 10 minutes ago. Vout Vicor the player who hasn't really kicked off in the Premier League just yet. I mean, he's sort of been a wee bit quiet the past few weeks. I'm going to say he gets an equaliser, comes up. A beautiful header from the corner, a bullet header past um, Ariola or uh, Fabian's head. I'm not, I'm not really too sure he'll play in that in this one, but I do think he'll score a bullet header past either one of them. A massive point here, I'm going to say, for um, Burnley, and yes, a massive point in their relegation fight. And well, it's another, bag, it's another big blow for West Ham United as they are looking to get Europa League or even Champions League football for next season. That could be a doubt if they cannot win this game, but yeah, I'm going to say it finishes 1 1 at the London Stadium. And now we're going on to the FA Cup semi-finals. And the first one is Manchester City versus Liverpool. Now, last time these two sides met was last week. 2-2, it finished. That's what I predicted. But what a game it was. I mean, it was one of the best games of Premier League football I've ever watched, really. Both sides playing with a high intensity. Like, I just knew it would be high scoring. And I knew it would be a good game of football. And, well, it delivered, didn't it? I mean, and and then they both um, they both played in the Champions League. Both drew 0-0 in Madrid. But uh, City they both threw 1-0 on aggregate. I tell you what though, what a fight that was though, I mean a big scrap there, I mean uh, City players will be all toughened up for this game, so they won't be taking any crap from the Scousers, whereas Liverpool drew 3-3 against Manfica, it was a rotated side, but yeah, there's still loads of goals in that one too, so yeah, they really do prove that their B team can score loads of goals as well, it's going to be another very interesting game, but this is what I think is going to go down. In the, in the first half, I'm going to say I'll finish 1-1 at half time. Riyad Mahrez, a player who cost Man City all three points. He cost him two points, really. Um, he bad, A bad shot uh, the right, right at the end. I'm going to say he scores the first goal of the game before Mohamed Salah quickly equalises 1-1 at half time. Second half begins, Sadio Mane, very quick on from the set, start of the second half. He slots it past Ederson. Liverpool are leading 2-1. And it looks like they're going to be going to the FA Cup final before Phil Foden comes in the 89th minute and equalises a massive goal for Manchester City. Phil Foden got some battering against Atletico Madrid, so he'll be all tough and up. <coughs> Sorry about that, lads. I don't know what happened. I just choked on something there. But anyway, um, Foden, I'm going to say, scores in the 89th minute. And well, it'll be a pretty good goal too. It'll be a tapping like, but I'll tell you what, the way, uh, the way he, got, he gets there and the way he'll take it, It'll be pretty good. So it finishes 2 all there. Another 2 2 draw at Wembley Stadium. It'll go to extra time and nothing much will happen there. And then it'll mean a penalty shootout. We'll be awaiting these two amazing sides. And the winner and the pit and the team who'll be going in to the FA Cup final will be Manchester City. Yes, I'm gonna say they'll win 7 6 on uh, on a penalty shootout. I'm gonna say that um t both teams will refuse to miss. Well, it comes down to like Abraham Iconate, they'll just sky his penalty, yeah. I know they won their last year against Chelsea, but I mean, 
Chelsea, I mean, Man City don't have Kepa or Uza Balaga, so what do you really expect here? So, yeah, I'm going to say 7 6 penalty win. Kanata missed the crucial penalty for the, the further raise, and well, Manchester City will once again be returning to the FA Cup final. And the final game here is Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. Now, many people will say this is an easy win for Chelsea, but do not underestimate Crystal Palace. They've got results uh, this season against Man City. I mean, they beat them and drew with them. That's pretty good there, isn't it? They beat Arsenal pretty comfortably. I mean, they've done very well this season, haven't they? I'm pretty sure they've they beat uh, Tottenham Hotspur, too, I am aware of. So, yeah, they're doing very good at the moment. And, well, I, I wouldn't underestimate them. Even if, even in the absence of Conor Gallagher, he's not allowed to play in this game. Abel still not underestimate Crystal Palace. That's what I think is going to go down, though. At half time, I'm going to say the Palace will have a 2-1 lead at Wembley. I'm going to say Christian Pulisic will open the scoring, though, for Chelsea before two quick fire goals from Eberiki Eze and Odson Edouard will see Palace with a 2-1 lead at half time well then they're going to defend like a unit but then with about uh, 15 or so minutes to go I'm going to say that Mason Mount will score the equaliser I mean of course without Conor Gallagher I'm going to say Chelsea will dominate the midfield and while it'll be overrun Mount will just prance through and score a beautiful goal past Vicente Gaeta 2-2 two -two finishes at full time it's going to go to extra time before I'm going to say in the 116th minute 4 more minutes until a penalty shootout Timo Werner a player who's really found loads of form is going to find the winner for Chelsea in a 3-2 win after after time. It's going to be an amazing FA Cup semi-final between these two games. And yeah, that means the final of the FA Cup, I think, will be Manchester City versus Chelsea. It's going to be good. Both these semi-finals are going to be very good. And I cannot wait to see what does go down. So yeah, anyway, that is my prediction. 3-2 Chelsea after after time. And everybody, that ends today's video. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thank you all for the supporting channel once again. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all in my very next video. Okay, see ya, team.